Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2 and in this episode I hope to scan the moon and Minmus for resources in order to plan where I'm gonna set up my future base and in order to do that we are going to use this satellite named Spore 1 the satellite has a carbonite detection array on the top radar altimetry sensor uh, orbital telescope mainly to counterbalance the altimetry sensor uh, the RPWS antenna is to counterbalance the magnetometer boom. The magnetometer boom scans for the ore, so that's why we have that there. Also, it can fulfill a contract. You see here, we've got a contract here that says position the satellite in a specific orbit of Kerbin, and as long as we have antennae, and we have antennae, and can generate power, we just get into this orbit, have a magnetometer and a thermometer. We have a thermometer over here and uh, then we will fulfill that contract and it's a pretty lucrative contract so what we'll do is we'll get into this orbit of Kerbin first and then from here transfer to the moon uh, so yeah we've got that there we've got the uh, probodobodyne octo as our core and then there's this stage and this stage has a one kilonewton not one kilonewton the ant engine and then uh, this stage has the spark and then we have an LV-909 and an LVT-45 and so I've called this the Spore 1 because we are using it to colonize elsewhere uh, reference uh, so it's pretty slow on the takeoff and um, we probably won't get into orbit on the second stage we'll use some of this third stage with the spark engine in order to actually finish orbit and then uh, go on I think the 3700 meters per second we have there should be more than enough to reach the designated orbit around Kerbin there and then proceed on to the moon so yeah that is the plan I don't uh, there's sort of a testing thing because I don't know if everything is working right all the mods are working right as they should so we're going to find that out now I have put parachutes on the first stage in the hope that stage recovery will let me recover it because the first stage is not going to go very far with the 1675 meters per second so it might be going so slow that deadly reentry wouldn't kill it and in that case maybe we can recover it so the parachutes have it uh, touching down at 4.7 meters per second so that's pretty good we will see if that works alright so on that note I think we'll just launch this and see what happens it's pretty expensive and that's because of the instruments if you take a look at the instruments involved the magnetometer boom is a thousand the orbital telescope is four thousand maybe I should skip well, I mean, we can get science for that. Uh, it's tough sometimes. This barometer is 3,300. The thermometer is 900. The RPWS antenna is 4,500. I mean, it's just crazy amounts of expense we're talking about here. Uh, but it's for science, so... Um, uh, and uh, taking a look at the 27,000, let's take a look at the contracts. Uh, maybe we can pick something else up that I haven't gotten so far. That might help to pay for it. Okay, so as far as active contracts, uh, we've got this polar satellite one, which we're not going to do because that's going to be really hard to get out of. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to be really weird anyway. Um, the position of satellite in a specific or orbit of Kerbin is definitely worth it. Uh, no question about that. We can get science data from space around the moon, which will be worth it. And uh, just that uh, will definitely transmit some science around Kerbin. Um... We've got an extract ore from Minmus and delivered to Kerbin. I don't even know if I can extract ore yet. So that's sort of weird. I, I didn't see a drill, did I? I need to check in the VAB to see if I have a drill. Test real shoot on launch site is trivial. I'm not interested in that. Okay, uh, long-term orbital reconnaissance survey of Kerbin. Now, I haven't gotten any of the other contract packs in here, if you're wondering. Uh, I have had suggestions. I haven't added them in just yet. I'll do that later on, I think. Um, yeah, let me just see how this, this is working okay so far. I, I, I solicited contracts because we, we weren't getting enough good stuff, but now we've got some decent ones, so I'll leave that be. But uh, I'll put those in soon. And temperature surveys of Minmus should be pretty easy, but um, I'll hold off on that for now. Well, it expires in 19 minutes and gives us 12 years. All right, I'll pick it up, I'll pick it up. Okay, long-term orbital reconnaissance, what does that take? Designated orbit, 
We need a little brother surveillance camera. That sounds sneaky. And then simple recon data. That's the experiment of that camera. Okay, let's see about that surveillance camera too. Little brother surveillance camera? Oh, it's this thing. It's one ton. Well, I'm not gonna do it right now. But that's interesting. It's 7,500 funds for one of those. Uh, as far as drilling equipment, can we drill for ore? We've got a carbonite drill here. That's interesting all on its own. And a, it can drill for carborundum too. But I don't think we can scan for carborundum yet. That's high tech sort of thing. There's the mini drill. That's going to be handy. We've got carbonite light in here as well. So, it looks like I can drill for carbonite. But I don't see anything to drill for ore. Yeah. So I don't know why they're giving us ore drilling contracts. I think that should be a carbonite drilling contract, if anything. Okay. Well, anyway, on that note, uh, and with that hope with the carbonite drills and everything... Uh, we'll probably try and launch a probe to start drilling for carbonite once we get this underway. So this one's going to the moon, save, and launch. Okay, well I brought the rocket out to the launch panel and I've noticed some critical flaws. I've got solar panels on, but definitely not enough electric charge. I need another battery. So let's recover vessel. Okay, here we are with some added battery power. I'm not too sure whether I can trust Smart ASS or not. Um... That's an interesting question. This is a very expensive satellite, and we don't want to stage the fairing at the same time as the OV-909. I'll let it go straight up for a little while, and then uh, we'll try and be gentle with it. We don't have any fins, so we have to be careful. Just the gimbling on the LV uh, LVT-45, and uh, one tiny reaction wheel on the probe. It's probably good to go straight up for a little while because the LV-909 stage is not that powerful. I don't know, let's see. Okay, it's deviating. Hold on. No, 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 no. No! Yeah, Smart ASS was not doing his job. It de start deviating in heading. How does it? Yeah, I mean, it's totally deviating in heading. I mean, that that was that's not a. Yeah, that's not acceptable. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'll just have to try and recover this. The probe is way too expensive to to mess around with here. Well, we are sort of messing around with it anyway. We're getting really top heavy right now. Try and keep it there. Ow. Ooh. Ow. Okay. Uh, this is not very helpful. Ah. Uh, all messy launches. This does have a thrust weight ratio of more than one, thankfully, but not that much more. So you can see the prograde vector is really going down now. Oh, I, I, okay, I don't dare do too much. I'm trying to tilt the fairing so that it's facing the airflow. Sort of like that. Don't know if that helps anything. Uh, there's a bit of drag going on somewhere. And the lift. I don't, I don't know what's going on with the various lift vectors. Well, I guess we'll at least figure out whether... I mean, boy, that stage wasn't going very fast. So hopefully stage recovery will be able to recover the stage that we just dumped. Uh, not, no word yet. That's from the previous launch. Oh, here we go. Spore 1 debris recovered 9 kilometers from KSC. Okay, well, we got uh, 3,600 for that. Uh, well, it says pounds. I don't know why it's in pounds instead of funds. We used to have a funds symbol. Anyway, but yeah. 
we got uh, plenty back, but not nearly as much as the probe cost. This is 20,000 20, funds. Okay, I think we can get rid of this ferry now. Yeah. Uh, well, we're definitely not going to make orbit on this stage, but after the fiasco of flipping around all those times, that's not a surprise. Fortunately, I packed a lot of fuel. Whether it's enough fuel, that's uh, still to be seen. Set. Zap. And ignition. Because again, we want to get into this orbit out here and then hit the moon. So, I mean, it's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, I haven't matched inclinations at all because we can easily correct once we get out there. But, uh, yeah, we're going all the way out there and then coming back in to hit the moon. We've also got this polar orbit contract, but we're not going to do that with this one. Okay, that's space. Ex extending the solar panels. Okay, charge recovery confirmed. We should be able to do some science in orbit around Earth. Uh, so, how about log visual observations on the orbital telescope, which is really expensive. All right, transmit that data. A little bit of clipping there on the antenna. Okay, we fulfilled the science data from space around Kerbin contract. There we go. We can do the other science while we're here. RPWS, radio plasma wave data. Oh, uh, deploying system. Yes, very good and uh, transmit that data. We get full value for transmitting. Okay, and how about this one? Well, it'll just do its thing. Yeah, I think it's already scanning, actually. I hope. I don't know if it's already scanning or not. Let's see. ScanSat? No. Uh, resources. Carbonite. Well, no indication that I'm scanning for Carbonite properly. So how about this map? Uh, if we select Kerbin, go to resources. We need to perform an orbital survey first. Okay, uh, is that required for carbonite? Because we don't have that the stock scanner. And if we don't have the stock scanner, I don't know if. Uh, and it's not showing, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do an orbital survey without the stock scanner. I guess we can't do it. It says 1% average carbonite, but uh, I guess we can't do this scan until, hmm, until we do an orbital survey, maybe? Not sure. Hmm, well, I think uh, first thing, let's fulfill the contract uh, with that satellite contract. And then we'll move it along. I mean, we were supposed to have a magnetometer on that on that uh, satellite anyway, so nothing lost there. Uh, let's start burning. Oh wait, uh, ascending nodes over there. So maybe a little bit longer, and then we'll start burning out. Try and hit that ascending node there. And then once we get over there, we'll correct our inclination and circularize our orbit. It's not quite circular, so we might have to do some other adjustments. But we'll boost our orbit. Okay, that should be good. Maybe a little bit more. All right, let's get over there. Make sure everything is all right. Keep an eye on the electric charge as we go out. We're going to be on the nighttime side of Kerbin there. So we'll probably lose some electric charge. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Take a look at that. So maybe a little bit more of a boost out. Yeah, I think that should satisfy it pretty well. So 310 is what we need left. All right, here we go. Node and burn. Let's hold it steady. Maybe that will fulfill the contract. Well, we definitely lost the LV-99 stage. Yes, we fulfilled the contract. We got the funds and some science. Oh, let's do some more science, actually, now that we're here. 
uh, log radial plasma wave data. Make sure we're recharging. Okay, transmit high over Kerbin. Okay, transmit. Oh, uh, somebody asked me to turn off that sound. Apparently, it's it's Chatterer, by the way. It's uh, this um, SSTV on science transmitted. Yeah. I just, I, I think that'll turn it off. Let's see, log magnetometer data. Okay, we already did that. Um, I don't know if we've done thermometer or barometer here. Actually, where did the thermometer and barometer go? Oh, I think they got buried under the, the battery. There, now when we transmit data, we don't hear it. Let's try and make for the moon now. That could be tricky. There's no, there's no standard way to do that here, and we have to cr uh, our inclinations off too. Perhaps over here is the best place to start thinking about this. Oh, uh, it looks like we have some sort of thing already going here. Yeah. I don't know, somehow we got captured by the moon anyway. Well, this wasn't a very good place to put a satellite. If we got to get captured by the moon anyway, who wanted to put a satellite here? Uh, it, it, uh, it's in an orbit that's unstable, it'll get captured by the moon. Silly contract peoples. Okay, well, anyway, that's handy for us. This is something I don't understand where our orientation with respect to the sun hasn't actually changed. I'm not entirely sure how that happens. Normally you have to turn it in order to continue to face the sun, but I haven't had to do that. Okay, but uh, the moon's right there. Government's right there. Pretty good view. Let's get captured. And there we are. Very simple. Look at that, we're almost in orbit around the moon. What, what an interesting situation. I mean, they had this satellite contract, and it automatically dumps us into a uh, lunar... Almost, how much does it actually take to get into a lunar orbit now? A lunar polar orbit, too, look. I mean, that was a really convenient contract. There. It takes like 5 meters per second to get into a lunar orbit. Well, of course, we want to be in a lower lunar orbit, but, like, that was the most convenient contract ever. Okay, here we go. Yep, just go off the node. We're pretty close. Let's retroburn. No, a uh, pretty circular orbit around the moon. Let's do some science stuff. Uh, log radio plasma wave. High over the moon still, though. Okay, an 18 science. Very good. So uh, we'll need to get lower over the moon. But good to do this stuff high over the moon. Magnetometer data. Oh, apparently we've done it high over the moon? Or it's just not counting? Orbital observations. Reset. Reset. It won't let me reset it. Okay, uh, keep. It's not letting me close this window. Alright, yeah, that, that window is just gonna stay. <laughs> um, okay. This is not letting me start anything. Taking a look at ScanSat. We're at least getting the altimetry data. Uh, let's go to the big map. So we're clearly getting a patch of altimetry data. But I'm not really seeing... Toggle Legend. Okay. I'm just not seeing any... any carb Maybe we just haven't hit any carbonite? It's possible. But uh, maybe we're just too high. It doesn't say too high. Actually, it says it's fine. I think it's actually alright. But some of our instruments, it's too high for, right? Not that one. This one, or surface, says it's too high. So, let's try and go lower. Well, now it's reading it. 6.46%. So now it's scanning for ore. Okay, let's verify that this altitude is alright for both. The magnetometer seems alright, and the carbonite. Okay, well they seem to be both reading some concentration, so let's circularize at this orbit, and also do uh, transmit some science from here. Okay, well, uh, we should be able to transmit some new science from here too. 
Uh, magnetometer, log. Nope, near the moon doesn't do anything for our magnetometer. Uh, this 27 science is really good though. How about our orbital telescope? Visual observations gets us 18. I'm pretty sure we've done thermometer and barometer before, but let's just check. Oh no, barometer we haven't. That's weird. Okay, transmit. We've scanned a bit of the surface. Wait, uh, there is a percentage here. Oops. Okay, try that again. I don't know, I, I saw a percentage displayed. I was hoping that was a resource percentage. No, it says or no data. says we've done 2.7% uh, of the moon. See, what's this 10.8% here? That's not how much we've scanned, I know. Yeah, I don't know if this is uh, really successful or not. Let me go back to the VAB, at least get rid of this message, and we'll see the details of these instruments, see what they say, and also when I can do an, a full orbital survey because obviously we can't do that right now. And I don't know if it's necessary for these instruments or not. There's sure not, I mean, it's detecting some ore, I mean 2.69%, and sure I could uh, jot it down and say, okay, well at this latitude and longitude, uh, you know, we've got that information down here, uh, we've got this much ore, and then we can plan to land there. But it'd be nice to have it on the map, actually. Oh, toggle resources. Okay, well, I definitely should have had toggle resources on. But it's still not showing anything. Wow, even here at the VAB, this message just won't go away. Uh, pretty persistent, isn't it? Haven't had that before. Never seen a message like that not go away. We got 175 science, by the way. Let's take a look at what we can do with it, sort of, if this, well, will let us. Um, general construction, we should, probably should just get that, but... Well, this uh, advanced electrics is something I want. It's got the better solar panels and everything. And it says all it requires is electrics. Uh, the problem is I don't... Uh, I think we need to upgrade the VAB, but it's, uh, yeah. Let's see... Let's see how much it costs to upgrade the VAB. Not the VAB, the R&D center. Uh, 451,000. Um, that's a little bit close to what I've got right now. VAB scene change. Let's see if that message goes away now. I mean, it's disappeared in this loading screen. That's hopeful. Nope, it's back. Wow. Disappeared in the loading screen, but it's back anyway. I don't know how that works. Taking a look at the details for the scanner's magnetometer boom. Not for use during atmospheric flight. Can also interface with ScanSat. Equipment to function as an ore scanner. Okay. Yeah, well, we didn't get any information on ScanSat from it. Max altitude 60 kilometers. We've got under 60 kilometers. Best is 50. Uses power. We've got it supplied with that. Doesn't say anything about needing an orbital scan first. Let me restart the game to get rid of this message and see maybe they're scanning properly after I restart. Okay, here we are back in the program, no little message there, and checking the map, let's go to the moon. Yeah, no indication of carbonite or ore, actually. It used to be when I hovered over it, we'd have a percentage down there telling us what the percentage concentration is. Refresh map. Alright, uh, let me wait until it's covered more of the surface, maybe just the locations we've got. Uh, don't have carbonite ore by by some chance. Okay, now refresh. We've definitely covered more of the surface, but no new indication of any ore concentrations, nor of any carbonite concentrations. Map type. Let's see. Maybe it needs to be. Oh, I love this. This is slope. Biome? Well, we don't have anything to scan for biomes, and that's not... Doesn't seem like the right map type anyway. 
I don't think the projection makes any difference. 7.7% has been scanned. That's not that much. I don't know what this able stock scanning means. Requires narrow, bound, narrow band scanner. Well, I don't have a narrow band scanner. Let me turn that off. Instant resource scan. Resource biome lock. I don't know what that means. I don't know what... Let's try this requires narrow band scanner off thing. And let's see if that helps anything. Oh, I don't think it helped. No resource data available. Need to perform an oral survey first. As expected. So if we were going to perform an orbital survey, where does where is that technology? Here we go. This is the stock survey scanner. Under science tech, scans all resources. Does the orbital scan, orbital survey. Fuzzy resources, resource scan. Interesting. Um, that's 300 science, and we can't research it yet. But I, I don't see the point in uh, letting us unlock the other scanners if they require that one. I guess we could see the concentration on the spot and I really could take it down in notes uh, in order to see where stuff is. So I guess we can go there and find the concentrations out that way. Anyway, I guess I'll unlock general construction and advanced construction now and then hold off on getting the full orbital survey. We can start building a space station, so that would be interesting, and many other things including sending a rover over. Rover over. What kind of contracts can we pick up now that we've completed a couple? Still got the polar orbit one. Plan a flag on the moon. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Let's accept that contract. Position a satellite in an equatorial orbit around the moon. We need a materials bay. Sounds like a plan. Rescue a Kerbal. One from orbit around the moon. One from orbit around Kerbin. The orbit around the moon one sounds much more interesting. We could rescue the Kerbal and have that Kerbal plant a flag and then return that Kerbal to Kerbin. That would be interesting. Orbital survey of the sun. See, I mean, it expects us to be able to do an orbital survey, but I don't have any part that does that. Let me go check on that. Uh, I don't know about the rescue mission yet. We'll think about that. I mean, really, is there anything here that provides an orbital survey already? Nope, I mean, there's nothing here that provides an orbital survey. So I don't know how it ex expects us to do that nor how it expects us to drill for ore. It's so weird that we get those contracts. Something not quite right. Um, we could send over a quick little drilling unit. We could put together one. We also need to get our first real reusable launch system. I'm not satisfied with our launchers right now. Let me work on that quickly and see what I can do. Alright, instead of building a new payload, I decided that we would test our new rocket with the same payload, the Spore, Spore satellite again, and do scanning around Minmus, and of course get more science for that, because of course this has a lot of scientific instruments anyway. A uh, very expensive thing as usual, uh, 22,500, that probe, uh, but uh, taking a look at that, we can, so that's 22,500, and then we'll put the fairings on. And the next stage is very simple. The next stage is simply an SRB. And you can see that it doesn't cost that much. It's about 3,000. About 3,000 for the SRB. And that's the second stage that will boost it most of the way to orbit. Actually, in this case, it'll, uh, it's actually too much. Um, <laughs> uh, this was designed for a rocket that has... Uh, 6.5 tons, uh, a payload that is 6.5 tons. Yeah. So we're going to tone it down. For this launch, we will see what we need. Let's see. Put that on. The stage size will remain the same. The amount of fuel we have in the SRB will change. 
I don't know how much that uh, cuts on the cost. Not much. The dry cost of the SRB is 2165 The fuel doesn't cost that much. But uh, we will set it at only less than a third of its uh, max capacity of sod fuel. That should be alright. Should give it quite a kick too. Anyway, uh, the base stage is expensive. Uh, you can see it's probably about 19000 and it's got fins, uh, it's got these thud engines, and at the center an engine I haven't tried before is this LVT-80 Robin. And this LVT-80 Robin has uh, 480 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust, good sea level ISP and vac vacuum ISP, not great, not, uh, you know, the swivel's better on the vacuum. It's basically an oversized Reliant, like two Reliants. And just like the Reliant, it doesn't have any gimbling, which is why I needed to put the thud engines with their 12 degree of gimbal range. They should really help a lot when it comes to controlling the vessel. They also have better vacuum ISP than the Robin. So it's a pretty expensive thing and uh, heavy, actually. I mean, the engines are pretty heavy. But we'll see. I've got a lot of parachutes on it. Stage recovery says that's 3.1 meters per second with all those parachutes. With the tanks full, it's 5 meters per second on that stage, so that's interesting. It could probably carry the whole rocket down, maybe, I don't know. We'll have to see. But anyway, so on that note, we will try this new rocket. For now, uh, this is just Spore 2, which is really the name of the probe. But we'll name the rocket if it works and seems to be a decent thing. The need to remove solid fuel in order to customize it based on the payload is a little bit irritating though. I will admit. Okay, so let's try and send this to Minmus. Alright, here we are. Interesting looking rocket. Good looking rocket, I think. Throttle up, SAS on, not really interested in what Smart ASS has to think about this. Let's go! That's some TWR initially. That's more than I thought it had. I thought it said 1.5 initially. It seems to have more than I thought. Let's throttle back. Oh, because 1.5 is with the full SRB on top. Um, and a full payload. This doesn't have a full SRB or a full payload. So obviously it'll get off the ground faster. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see how controllable it is. Lots of vectoring. We've got fins even. We've only got the small reaction wheel. And so the payload is sort of balancing on that. The small reaction wheel is necessary to help the SRB to turn and point in the right direction. Hopefully it'll be enough. We'll find out. It's probably going to be going a lot faster than the other one, though. So I don't know if stage recovery will be able to uh, bring it back. Let me see how much delta V the SRB stage has. 1,300, okay. We might cut this stage out early to facilitate it being recovered. Alright. Uh, I think I'm gonna cut it there. Oops. Wow, we we lost control pretty darn quickly there, huh? Uh, okay. Stage set. Okay, now we really need the, S, uh, the reaction wheel to turn this in the right direction before the SRB lights. Uh, uh, come on, come on. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good. All right, SRB. All right, and the SRB will go back into the atmosphere. That is as planned. Uh, let's see, everything good. All right, set. And then this stage will complete orbit. All right, well, uh, at least our probe is safe. Pretty nifty rocket, really quick time to orbit. We're still encountering drag, of course, still in the atmosphere. Uh, Alright, we've got a message. Stage recovered. Okay, good. So, uh, recovery percentage is 88.9 because of the distance from the KSC, I suppose. A stage value 20,000, we recovered 17,857, call it. 
Okay, well that's excellent, so we got our money back. Terminal velocity, 3.7 meters per second. So, uh, I mean, it was a good thing that I checked what the velocity would be with a full stage because we left some fuel in there. Because otherwise, I thought it would be going a little bit too fast. And also, we had the Delta V in the SRB stage to complete orbit. Any well, not complete orbit, but uh, get as far as I wanted to anyway. Okay, so that is an interesting little rocket we've got there. SRB second stage, because the upper stage is going to be disposed of anyway. So might as well make it as cheap as possible. And I guess the SRBs... Well, I'll have to do some some checks to see maybe uh, LV-99 might be cheaper depending on the situation but that uh, rocket was configured for a 6.5 ton max payload in which case I think uh, the LV-99 would be a little bit a little bit too low on the thrust to handle that okay let's go for orbit There we go, let's get this over to Minmus. We could do the polar orbit thing, but... I, I don't know if I have all the instruments anyway. Let's do this first. Okay, trans Minmus injection. Proceeding. Okay, there we go, Minmus periapsis 216 kilometers and somehow increasing I don't know how I've turned the engine off my apoapsis is still going up yeah my apoapsis is still going up even though the engine we, we, we don't have any thrust something about the way this orbit is being calculated is not working out my orbital period is going up engines out I can tell the engines up because for instance I can time warp now, when I do time warp, uh, it does stabilize it, but how about if I get out of time warp? Will it change? Yeah, it starts creeping up again. Look at that. I don't know. There's something with the way uh, orbits are calculated that isn't working out quite right. Or Obviously, our orbital period is not supposed to be going up like that. And, uh, yeah, uh, if this is a thing, then so much for geosynchronous satellite or geosynchronous satellites or anything like that. You can't have your orbit deviating like this when you want to put one in an appropriate orbit. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Okay, well, at least it stabilizes during time warp, so I can just proceed. We'll just go out there, see what happens. Alright, we have our Minmus encounter. It is a polar-ish encounter, so we just need to get a little bit closer to Minmus, and we should be all right. I assume the same attitudes, altitudes will work, so let's go with 40 kilometers here as well, even though that's not technically low over Minmus. And then let's proceed to periapsis and do the scans. Minmus is looking sort of creepy at this point not as green as it usually is oh there's the green I wonder why it just popped in like that okay 47.7 .7 by 40 let's do some science log magnetometer data oh that's done high over Mimis already okay the altimetry sensor is just going I don't know if we can't send anything yet. Okay. Um, log visual observations. Transmit. No comm devices. What are those? Transmit data. Hmm. Well, okay. It had a little bit of a hiccup where it thought there were no comm devices, but now it realizes the error of its ways radio plasma wave data transmit I assume we've done the thermometer but let's just check barometer we haven't done thermometer we have okay uh, unknown carbonite data that's weird so we got some carbonite readings 
or on the moon, but here it just says flat out unknown. Okay, well, we're scanning. At least we're getting the altitude. We're not really getting the resources at all. So I'll figure that out for the next episode. And at least we've got some scanners underway. We've got some science thanks to them, so that's a positive. And we also got some stage recovery safe recoverable stages, so that's nice too. Okay, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.